Well, today we're going to wrap up our series called Who Am I? And what we've been doing is we've been talking about who we are in Jesus Christ. And this is not like self-help, uh, motivational speaker kind of thing. But rather, this is about seeing what Jesus Christ says about us. And it is extremely helpful. It's extremely motivating. And it helps us become what God wants us to be, what he's already declared that we are. So we've been talking about who am I in Christ. And today we're going to wrap this series up. And the last message is I am wise. If I were to give it a more practical title, it would be uh, finding wisdom to get through what we're going through. It doesn't take a genius to know that we need some wisdom uh, about this time in our nation's history, don't we? We need wisdom to get through what we're going through. Going through a pandemic, going through all of this social upheaval, going through racial unrest. We need God's wisdom to get through what we're going through. Now, there are a lot of people that say they have wisdom, but we're not talking about human wisdom. We're talking about supernatural wisdom. And so what God wants for us is to have wisdom supernatural wisdom. And here's what God has declared about you, that he lavishly pours out his wisdom on you. Now, how many have ever taken a test and you did not feel wise? Anybody? I can raise my hand. How many took a test and you knew you weren't wise because you did not study, all right? And you, if it was multiple choice, you just guessed. Anybody ever do that, right? You got a 50-50 shot on each question, right, if it's a multiple choice. So, well, anyway, the, the truth is, we need wisdom. But supernatural wisdom is different than human wisdom. The Bible tells us to pursue both, all right? We're to pursue knowledge and wisdom. Now, how do we pursue knowledge? Well, you do it through education. You do it through reading. Uh, you do it through observing. The Bible is filled with ways that we are to gain knowledge. The Apostle Paul wrote this. He said, we are to study to show ourselves approved unto God. So, in other words... There is a part of getting, gaining knowledge that is my responsibility. I'm to go through life and try to learn. I'm to listen to wise people. I'm to listen to wise counsel. I'm to listen to the teaching of the Word of God. And by doing that, I'm gaining knowledge. But there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge is knowing that tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is knowing not to put it in fruit salad. Uh, knowledge is knowing that an electric sh fence will shock you. Wisdom is not trusting your uncle when he says it won't hurt if you touch it, right? I learned that one the hard way. But there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge is just knowing a lot of facts. You can know stuff about life. But we all know that the, wor the world is filled with highly intelligent people that have no spiritual wisdom in their life. You can be really smart, but be a fool. You see, here's the difference. In the, the Bible, uh, wisdom is really uh, defined as uh, submitting my will and mind to the will and mind of God. All right, that's, that's supernatural, spiritual wisdom. All right, that, that's a little bulky, so get your head around that. Let me say that again. Wisdom, according to the Bible, is surrendering your will and your mind to the will and mind of God. So uh, when I surrender my will and mind, my will may be that I do not want to control my tongue. I want to blast that person because they said something ugly to me. Uh, but surrendering my will, my desire to do that, and my mind saying, God, I need your help because I'm about to bust out in a, blues, a cuss in a blue streak. God, if you don't help me, you surrender your will and your mind to the will and mind of God, okay? So that's biblical wisdom. Knowledge is just, you know, gaining facts. And so uh, foolishness, however, is being stubborn and wanting to follow my own will and my own way of thinking. How many of you know that we don't know what tomorrow holds? How many of you know that we don't know everything? I, the only exception is teenagers who now know everything in life, and I encourage you to run for president while you still know everything, because when you get a little older, you're going to figure out you don't know everything, right? And, and so the, the fact is, we must pursue wisdom, biblical wisdom. Now, um, 
in, in the Bible, um, for those of you that are maybe new to faith or you don't know that much about the Bible, uh, let me just help you, especially those of you joining online, uh, maybe you are new to this Christianity thing. Talk to people this past week that have been watching online and they're brand new to the area, they're brand new to faith, and I, I love connecting with people like that. So maybe you're the person that doesn't know that much about the Bible. Let me just kind of catch you up uh, so that you'll know exactly what we're talking about today. The Bible is written over a period of about 1,500 years. You have an Old Testament, which was written before Jesus, and New Testament, once Jesus was born, that it records the life of Jesus and the life of the, the beginning of the church in the New Testament. So you have an Old Testament and a New Testament. One of the people that wrote the majority of the books in the New Testament was a man named the Apostle Paul. Now he was a religious terrorist, and by that I mean he helped kill Christians. Um, you, you read it in the book of Acts about his life. But he had a, an amazing conversion experience. God appeared to him. Jesus actually appeared to him. And he had this amazing conversion experience. He trusted Christ, and he became a leader in the church. In fact, he wrote more of the New Testament than any other person, and he planted more churches than any other person in history. He started churches in Asia, Africa, and Europe uh, back just a few, year, a few decades after Jesus was here on this earth. So he had an amazing accomplishment. So what we're going to read today is from the Apostle Paul. And he was a church father, a church founder, and he had so much wisdom that we believe was given to us under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And so when we read what he said, we're reading a letter that Paul wrote uh, to real-life people to real life Christians that he had had a hand in reaching uh, with the gospel. And so uh, what we're going to read today is from what he says about wisdom. Now, anytime you read a letter or a story or scripture, you need to read it in context. You know, you can take something out of context and get a completely different meaning. So in the context, we don't have time to read the entire thing, but I'm just kind of setting this up for you. Uh, in the context of what we're getting ready to read, the Apostle Paul was writing about that in Christ, we have redemption. God is, that means that God paid the ransom for our life. He purchased us. Uh, when he, Jesus died on the cross, he redeemed us. He paid the ransom for us. And he says, when you get this, when you put your faith in Christ, you get these exceeding great promises that were promised to Jesus Christ himself. And then you learn how that God lavishly pours out his grace and his love and even his wisdom on us. So that's the context. He had uh, written this. He said, look, when you receive Christ, you are redeemed. God's changed you. And then you're going to learn to live in this amazing grace that God gives. He lavishly pours it out. It's not just a little bit. He doesn't get tired of it. He loves lavishing his grace on us. And he loves pouring out his wisdom on you. So in the context, he declared that you and I, when we become followers of Jesus, we get automatic access to supernatural wisdom. That's what he's saying. We get automatic access to supernatural wisdom. However, there are a whole lot of Christians that don't access it. It's like having a bank account that somebody put a million dollars in, and you're aware of it, but you're like, well, I don't really think this is real, and you're behind on your bills, and yet you have access to a million dollars, and you never take access to it. Well, how silly would that be? How silly would it be for me to declare that I am wiser than God because he's the one that sees all. He knows what happens tomorrow and the next day and the next year, and he has all power. How silly would it be for me to say, you know what? I'm going to go against your will and your mind, and I'm going to trust my will and my mind. Well, that would be foolish. And so what Paul is writing is he's saying that you and I uh, can look at life from God's point of view and we can understand that he gives us wisdom. Now, in this text, he prays that we'll all get it. He prayed that his readers would get it, that the people that were members of the church there would get it, and he prayed for you and me that we would get this wisdom, okay? 
Now, how many would like wisdom for making wise choices? Okay, some of you. All right, some of you don't care. All right, that's why you're broke. All right, so, uh, but no, we all want wisdom. We want to make the right choice when we get married. We want to make the right choice for our career or going to college or not. We want to make the right choice in the house that we buy or the car that we buy. We want to make the right choices with our finances. We want to make the right choices with our children. We want to make the right choices in our marriage. The fact is, we all want to make right choices. And God says that we can have this wisdom, not just human wisdom, but supernatural wisdom that comes from God. Now, once I read this text, I'm going to answer three simple questions. What kind of wisdom is this? How do I get it? And what does it do? What kind of wisdom is God promising me? How do I get it? Because he said, I'm praying that you're going to get it, more of it. How do I get it? And what does it do when I do get it? So let's read uh, in Ephesians chapter 1, beginning in verse 15. He says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. Now, he's talking to the members of his church and the, uh, the church that he helped start. And uh, so he's writing to these Christians in this region and saying, I'm very, very thankful for you. Then he goes on. He says, I pray for you constantly. Now, notice what he asked for. Asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight. Spiritual wisdom and insight. Now, you can have spiritual wisdom and not open yourself up fully so that you don't also have practical wisdom. Now, spiritual wisdom, when you fully grasp it, not only does it help you in your relationship with God, but it helps you in your regular daily life choices, okay? But notice what he asked for wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God, so that you might be closer to God, so that you might know Jesus better, so you might know what to do in your spiritual life. You ever just get confused in the Christian life? What am I to do next? You ever like read the Bible and it's like, you know, you know you're supposed to read the Bible, but sometimes you read it and you go, huh? What in the world does that mean? And it's not hard to understand most of it. I mean, when the Bible says, be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you, that's not hard to understand. I know what that means that I'm to forgive the person that ticked me off that I wanted to run over with my car, right? I'm to forgive. I'm to be kind. That's not hard to understand. But there are times in the Christian life that we're like, what? What is he talking about here? What should I do next, God? Or we get confused. We're waiting we're waiting to hear from God. What do I do, do I do next with my career? Do I start this business? Do I quit this job? Do I take this other job? Uh, do I try to apply for a promotion? Uh, how do I handle my kids? Because they're bringing home problems that I'm not prepared to deal with. You need wisdom. You need wisdom. So he said, I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so you can understand the confident hope that he has given to those who he called his holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. So notice what he said here. He wants us to have wisdom and insight. That's revelation, really. Wisdom and insight, so we'll know more about God. And we'll have our heart flooded with the light of Jesus so that we'll have confidence in him. You see, once you begin to know more about Jesus, once you begin to know more about the Bible, once you begin to have a closer relationship with Jesus Christ, it transforms things in your life because now all of a sudden you're trusting him. When you read that he says uh, that you're to take this step or you hear the word of God taught and the Holy Spirit shows up, begins to convict you in your life, then yeah, it might still be a little fearful to take that step, but you're not really afraid to the point that you're not willing to take the step. You begin to take those steps. So he said, I want you to have this light that gives you hope. And then I want you to understand in the next verse, he says, I, I want you to understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. You know, if I could begin in my life to get wisdom, not just wise according to the car salesman, 
Not just wise according to the teacher, but spiritual wisdom, godly wisdom. If I'm able to get that, and God reveals to me the Word of God. By the way, you know how God reveals the Word of God to you when you listen to the preaching and teaching of the Word of God? When you read it and you pray and say, God, speak to me. It's not that hard. The fact is, he says you can have this revelation in your life, this incredible insight, and then you can have confidence and you can know the power of God. I don't know about you, but if I've got those tools, there's nothing in life that I can't handle. If I know that I've got God's wisdom on my side, that God is revealing things to me, he gives me light of Jesus and I have confidence in my relationship with him, and I know the incredible power of God, then it increases my faith. And notice how he said this power of God is and what it does. He said, this is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. You have access to resurrection power. The same power that got Jesus out of the grave is the power that God has promised to you. Isn't that incredible? God has the power to resurrect things. To bring dead things to life. He can bring a dead marriage back to life. He can bring a dead career back to life. He can bring a dead heart, a, a lost passion. He can bring it back to life. He can bring back to life your desire for Him. You and I, when we get this wisdom, according to what the Bible says, when we begin to get this wisdom, God will give us hope. He'll give us confidence. We'll begin to understand. So, I'm having wisdom, I'm having revelation or light, and I'm having understanding. If I, like, get wisdom to make a decision, all of a sudden I have this, this incredible insight from God on what to do, and I have understanding. Because everything that God does, we don't understand, right? And, but when you begin to trust God, you may not understand everything, but you're going to understand that He's got your best interests at heart, that He's got your best interest in mind. And when you begin to understand that, it helps you to trust Him and to follow Him, right? Okay? So, let's uh, finish reading it. He says, now He is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. So, in other words, He's got you covered. He's got authority over everything. He's got authority over life and death, over heaven and hell, over the future, over your past, over the present. He's got authority in your life and in the world. And God has put all things under the authority of Christ and made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. Now notice how he slips this in here. When you want wisdom, when you want to get better as a Christian, he throws this in that this is done for the benefit of the church. Now, the understanding is that you will be a part of that body, that you're a part of that church. He said, and the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. So, God gives us the understanding of how to gain wisdom. Now, I told you I was going to answer three questions. Number one, what is this spiritual wisdom? What is it? What is it? Well, understand that it is supernatural spiritual wisdom. It's spiritual wisdom. I, I can have wisdom in finances and not be a follower of Christ. I, I can listen to what Dave Ramsey says and get better at my finances and still not be a believer. So we're not talking about earthly wisdom. We're talking about spiritual wisdom, something that comes from your relationship with God. Now, does it translate into earthly wisdom? Yes. When I have spiritual wisdom, I am able to make the right choices if I'm single and I'm dating. Uh, and instead of waiting on Mr. Right, I'm just waiting on Mr. Right now. That's a poor choice. That's unwise. You need to learn how to have spiritual wisdom. You might have a physical attraction to somebody that it is not spiritually wise for you to be in a relationship with. So God will begin to give you wisdom. Maybe it's in your money. Obviously, you can learn how to deal with finances by listening to Dave Ramsey. But what about supernatural 
wisdom that only comes from God. I'll give you an example of this. Um, I had saved all of my money. I'd worked from the time I was 12. I'd saved enough money to pay for my college. And so I was going to be debt-free and um, had enough money. I had, had my car, had it paid for, and I was only 17 years old. And so, but this missionary came by, and my parents, of course, uh, had been saved when I was younger. I got saved when I was eight, and they taught me to tithe. And so I'd been doing that with the jobs that I'd been working since I was 12 years old. And so I was giving the tithe, but I'd saved this money. I'd saved all this money. And this missionary came by and began to talk about this project that he was doing and this church building that he was building, and he needed money. And the Holy Spirit just laid on my heart to give everything in my bank account except for $100. So I just leave the bank account open. I was going to empty out my college fund and give it to this missionary. Now, that's not earthly wisdom. The truth of the matter is, my parents found out about it. They tried to, and they're Christians, and they are believing it. And they're like, you need to get that money back. And I'm like, no, God led me to do this, all right? And so I, I did it, and I was like, God, I'm trusting you. And do you know that that very week, I got a phone call from the college I was going to attend. I got a phone call from a man that I'd never met before. I'd never heard of him. I didn't know his name. When he told me his name, I'm like, that's a weird name. I don't know who you are. But the fact is, on that phone call, that man paid for all four years of college, and I graduated completely debt-free. Now, the point is this. That's spiritual wisdom, okay? Now, there may be some of you that are in that boat. You're a believer. You're a giver. You put God first in your money. And maybe, maybe... God's getting ready to speak to your heart with spiritual wisdom. As soon as this pandemic is over, uh, we're hopefully going to get back on course with purchasing land and getting ready to build a building. There may be some of you in the room or some of you watching that God, through supernatural wisdom, will begin to lay on your heart to write a check for a million dollars to pay for the land. Now, I know that some of you are like, well, that's crazy. Well, that's because you don't have a million dollars. But there are people that do. And there are people that God will use in this way. What is that? That's supernatural wisdom. And you know what? I've never heard a story of somebody that followed God in supernatural wisdom that ever lost out. God always blesses when you follow his wisdom. Once again, it's surrendering to his will and his mind. So what kind of wisdom is this? Well, it's, it's supernatural. It's spiritual in nature. And um, in this wisdom, we understand that it comes from God. Notice that it comes through revelation. He said, you get insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. And it comes from the light of Jesus. Now, this kind of wisdom changes our understanding of things and allows us to see things from God's perspective. It empowers us to overcome bad circumstances, sickness, suffering, and financial hardships. And it gives us peace in our storms because we know that God is our anchor and He is in control and He loves us. Now, I could give you examples from my own life and from the life of this church about spiritual wisdom that God has revealed to us. Uh, I can tell you so many stories. When I was 12 years old, some of you have heard this story before. It's a very powerful story. And um, if you've heard it before, just hang on. If you keep on coming, you'll probably hear it again sometime in the future. <laughs> Excuse me. But when I was 12 years old, our family was at church, and it was two days before Christmas time, and uh, we got a phone call that our house was on fire. We began to speed back home. We got there. The firemen were there. The trucks were in the yard. The driveway was blocked. They were chopping a hole in the roof and they were putting out this fire. Well, as you can imagine, we didn't know what to do. We're standing there, all of our Christmas presents are burning up, all of our clothes are burning up, all of our furniture is burning up, all of our food is burning up. We had nothing but the cars in the driveway and the clothes on our back. Well, my dad, and I'll never forget it, we were standing there and we were looking at him, my sister and I, my mom, we were looking at him 
and he got kind of a smile on his face. And I'm like, oh, no, I hope that dude didn't set the house on fire to collect the insurance because that would be bad, you know. But he, he had this smile on his face. And I were like, Dad, what's going on? And he, he looked at us. He said, kids, I want you to understand. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And I am not worried because God is going to take care of us. Well, I could go on and tell you uh, lots of stories like that, but supernaturally, God not only provided a new home, but provided money for my parents who were struggling financially at the, that point, and God blessed them immensely through something that they thought was going to be a curse. That is applying supernatural wisdom. So what is it? Well, it's spiritual nature. And number two, how do you get it? How do you get it? Well, according to what Paul wrote, uh, you get this wisdom. It begins with a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's where it begins. You can't have supernatural wisdom without a relationship with Jesus Christ. And God says that uh, you and I begin that relationship with Jesus Christ simply by faith, putting our faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. So when you put your faith in Christ, you're setting yourself up you have access to supernatural wisdom. That's the, the first step. And then here's the second thing. And you're going to think this is incredibly hard. You're going to think, boy, I've got to be really disciplined to do this. Do you know how you get supernatural wisdom according to the Bible? You ask. Wait a minute. That's not hard at all, is it? You ask. James chapter 1. Uh, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God who gives to all people liberally, generously. Um, and, and I love the old King James. It says, he upbraideth not. What does that mean? Well, it means he doesn't have prejudice toward anybody. He's not like, you know, well, I'm going to give you some. And, and not you. I'm going to give you, uh, you, you No, know, not you. If you ask, yes. If you ask, no. That's, God doesn't do that. He says, anyone that asks in faith, he gives them to. He gives it to them. But he said, you got to ask in faith. If you're wavering, you're not going to get this kind of wisdom. So you ask for it. That's pretty simple, isn't it? And then you surrender to the Holy Spirit. This wisdom comes from the indwelling of the Holy Spirit of God. You remember in the Gospel of John where Jesus talked about the comforter that was going to come. And one of the things that he would do is he would teach us all things. In other words, the Spirit that dwells in us is going to give us wisdom. He's going to teach us how to act. He's going to teach us. You ever been in church and the preacher was saying something or teaching something and all of a sudden it's like, ooh, I hear that, but I don't want to hear that. I hear that, but I don't want to do that. You ever been there? I have, okay? In fact, sometimes even when I'm preparing them, I'm like, ooh, I don't want to do that, you know? And, and, and the fact is, that is the Holy Spirit in your life working on you. You ever just say something you know you shouldn't have said, and then all of a sudden you feel bad about it? Well, that's the Holy Spirit working in your life. So when you surrender to the Spirit of God, you get access to this wisdom. When you submit to the authority of Christ, and this is one that's going to shock you. We just saw it when we read that text. Actively participate in the life and community of the church. He said this was for the church. It's for you. And so if I want wisdom, first of all, it's supernatural in nature. God gives it as spiritual wisdom. I have access to this wisdom when I receive Christ, when I become a follower of Jesus. And then if I want it, all I got to do is ask. Now, once again, let me just give you an example of surrendering to the Spirit of God. Um, if I am um, about to break and enter and steal something, and I ask God for wisdom for which window to go in so that I will not be, uh, you know, subject to the police because of the alarm that went off, that is not surrendering to the will of God or the mind of Christ. Do you understand what I'm saying? Um, I had a per this true story. I had a person tell me one time he wanted me to pray. He felt like it was God's will for him to marry this woman. The problem was he was married to another woman at the time. And that woman, he said, was God's will for him to marry was married to somebody else as well. It turns out he was having an affair. And uh, so that's not the wisdom of God. You, you don't pray for that. But when you pray, 
and you surrender to God, then God promises he would give wisdom to those that ask. Okay, does that make sense? And then here's the final thing. What does this kind of wisdom do? Well, mainly it gives us insight for living. He says, I want you to grow in your knowledge of God. It grows your hope in Christ. The more you know about him, the greater your confidence in him is. It helps you discover the wealth of your inheritance in Christ. And boy, I could talk about that for a long time. And it shows us the great power of God in our lives. You see, God says there that he has this power and you have access to it. The same power that resurrected Jesus from the grave, you and I have access to. And we have access to this wisdom. Let me close with this, Proverbs 16, 3. Commit your work to the Lord and then your plans will succeed. This is, in a nutshell, what he's talking about. When I commit my life to the Lord, when I commit my plans to the Lord, when I ask God for wisdom, I'm going to be successful. I'm going to succeed. When I'm surrendering to the will and the mind of Christ, I'm going to succeed. But I also want to give those of you hope that maybe you're on the rough side of the storm right now. You don't feel that the anchor is holding you very well. It is but you're afraid. Maybe you're in the middle of a storm that's so difficult, it's very difficult for you to see. Let me give you this from Job 36, verse 15. By means of their suffering, he rescues those who suffer, for he gets their attention through adversity. Sometimes the reason you suffer is not that God's mad at you, he's not judging you, he's not beating you upside the head. He is lovingly getting your attention. He is lovingly saying, I want you to come to me. I want you to trust me. I want you to turn to me for help and hope. He's not not causing you to suffer without reason. He's not making you suffer because he's mean. He's not beating you up because he doesn't like you, but rather through means of their suffering, Through means of their suffering, he gets their attention. And that adversity causes us to turn to him. Are you facing a situation where you need wisdom? Are you facing difficulty today? You see, God made supernatural wisdom available to every believer. But it's up to us to pursue it. Pray for it. And to submit to it. I'm going to tell you this. The wisest choice you can ever make is the choice to receive Jesus as your Savior. Today, maybe you don't know Christ as your Savior. Maybe those of you joining us online, you're wondering, what do I do? The Bible says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord will be saved. That calling is an act of faith. It is putting my faith in Jesus, not my membership of a church, not my baptism, not my uh, good works, but rather I'm trusting Jesus as my Savior. And you can pray a simple prayer like this. Dear Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God, and I'm asking you right now to save me. Come in my life and change me in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer or you want to pray that prayer, online, click that you receive Christ. We can see that as a raised hand. We can see that you trusted Christ today. In the room today, please take a moment to fill out the next step card if you trusted Christ as your Savior. But what about for those that are already believers? What area of your life do you need wisdom? Is it in your business or your job? Is it with your family? Maybe you've had a loss or you're grieving and you don't know what to do to get out of that state. Maybe you have blown it in some way and you need restoration in a relationship whatever it is God says ask him ask him and he'll give it to you today I I want you to pray this prayer with me Um, and you can just follow along you can follow along online as well Heavenly Father I submit to your will and your word today I ask that you give me supernatural wisdom in the decisions I make and to accept the plans that you have for me. I encourage you to pray that prayer today. And when you do, I believe God will hear and answer your prayers. 
Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. I pray that you bless all that are joining us online, all that are joining us in person today. God, help us to have wisdom, supernatural wisdom from God. And Lord, we thank you for it right now. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. Thanks for joining us at Avalon Church. Share this message with a friend and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single video. You can also join us every Sunday live on the Avalon Church Facebook page. If you feel led to give and support our mission of bringing people wherever they are into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ, you can do so by clicking the Give button. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time.